Our conversations are boring. <laughs> our introductions are boring. And today, I'm going to challenge you to make them better. Have you ever heard an introduction that sounds a little bit like this? Hi, my name is blank. I attend blank university. I major in blank. This is how we introduce ourselves, both professionally and personally, and it's boring. It is absolutely boring. It is not unique, it's not interesting, and it's not personal. We're basically reiterating things about ourselves that I could have found out about you on your LinkedIn resume, or your LinkedIn profile, or your resume. And it's not just our introductions, it's our everyday conversations. And we can make our conversations better. So when I graduated from college here at the University of Cincinnati last year, I traveled alone in Europe for one month. I went to 14 different cities and seven different countries. And honestly, when I first arrived in London, I was horrified. I was absolutely horrified because I was like, okay, now I'm in London and I'm alone. I don't know anyone here and I'm completely unfamiliar with where I am. So honestly, I was awkward. I, I was there for a few days and had almost no conversations with anyone aside from a few awkward conversations in line. And I felt miserable, I felt disconnected, and I felt like I should be talking to people. And honestly, for the next few cities, this went on, uh, and then I kind of had a realization. I was reflecting and journaling, and I was like, wait, humans are a fundamentally social species, and we're supposed to be talking to each other. We're supposed to be connecting. It's not okay for us to go in public and not talk to each other. So, uh, you know, I kind of started to get over that and have connections with more people. So as I moved into the cities in the middle and end of my trip, I started having amazing conversations. I heard stories from people around the world and really connected with them. Some of them I still stay in touch with using social media. But then I came back to Cincinnati after having all of these new relationships and new conversations, and I realized our conversations here in our hometown are bad too. And it's really nothing about traveling or being abroad that created that experience for me. So I kind of started to reflect and think, well, why is the quality of our conversations so low? And I realized that's because our conversations are bull chat. And I want to encourage you to cut the bull chat. <laughs> so what is bull chatting? When we're talking about the weather or the score of the latest sports game, we're bull chatting. When we're talking about uh, very superficial level things, basic things that I could find on your Facebook profile or your LinkedIn, that's bull chatting. And we all have had these conversations. When we have a conversation with someone and we walk away and five minutes later we have no idea what we just talked about, we've all had them, that's bull chatting. And so I'm here today once again to challenge you to cut the bull chat. So let's move on. Talking about social media, it has absolutely changed the way that our generation interacts. Social media has completely, and technology, changed the way that we interact with each other. It's, and in some ways, it's helpful. Social media is a very helpful, supplemental tool to help us stay in touch with each other between our interactions. But we can't migrate our entire relationships to the internet. And a lot of us have. I know I've done it, and I know that we have all migrated some of our relationships completely to the internet, which is a shame. The best Facebook message or text message we can send someone is, when do you want to meet up? Because personal conversations, the opportunity to sit down with someone face to face and talk to them about what's going on, talk to them about their passions, their stories, and really build that relationship is absolutely critical. We cannot migrate our relationships to social media. So let's talk about cutting the bull chat. What is a catalyst? A catalyst is a substance that causes or accelerates a chemical reaction or a person or thing that precipitates change. Now, I haven't really heard about a catalyst since I took a chemistry class however many years ago, but it turns out they do have some relevance to us today. What is a social catalyst? A social catalyst is a person who uplifts the community through everyday interactions. Social catalysts have more conversations and more interactions with people they have higher quality interactions, and they uplift the community through their interactions. So let's think about what that looks like. Social catalysts change their communities. Social catalysts absolutely bring people together and bridge the gap between people and completely uplift people. 
Now, I'm not challenging anyone to be a social catalyst and change your personality type. An introvert can be a social catalyst. An extrovert can be a social catalyst. Because we can all make an effort to uplift the community through our interactions. And there are so many interactions that I found uh, upon returning to Cincinnati. It can be at work, it can be at school, it can be in class, it can be with our waitress at dinner. Every moment in your day that you're interacting with someone is an opportunity to be a social catalyst. So that person in front of you in line at Starbucks, they're not an obstacle to your coffee. They're a relationship opportunity. <laughs> and your waitress, your waitress at dinner is not a magical machine that makes the food appear before you. Your waitress is a relationship opportunity, an interaction opportunity, one that you should definitely be taking advantage of. So in order to do this, we're going to need to break some rules. The first component of being a social catalyst was having more interactions with people. And like I felt in Europe, sometimes we feel that that's awkward. Sometimes we feel, I'm not supposed to do this, I'm not supposed to be talking to this person, it's weird, they're going to think I'm a creep, I can't do it. <laughs> but it's not weird. Like I said, humans are a fundamentally social species. We are a fundamentally social people, and we should be having those interactions with each other. And once we get over that perspective, that we're not supposed to be doing it, you will be amazed at the new relationships that you build and the amazing conversations that you have. Because before long, you won't be breaking the rules anymore, you'll be making the rules. Making rules that say, it's okay to talk to people in public instead of scrolling aimlessly through our smartphones. Rules that say, there's no such thing as having too many friends. And rules that say, every time you intersect with someone, is a relationship opportunity, or at the very least, an, or an opportunity to uplift their day. Because we've all had those conversations, maybe some of them have happened today, where we walked away and thought, wow, that's the best conversation I've had in a while, or at the very least, we walk away smiling. And I'm challenging all of you to look for those opportunities in your daily life to deliver those moments to other people. The second component of a social catalyst was having some higher quality interactions, increasing the quality of the conversations that you're having with people. And I have a few strategies I'd like to suggest to make that possible. The first strategy is to avoid fill-in-the-blank questions. Start asking why. So instead of saying, what is your major, say, why did you pick your major? Instead of saying, where are you from, or what is your hometown, say, why do you like your hometown, or why do you not like your hometown? Tell me stories about your hometown. If you open up the canvas of conversation for people to fill it and answer as they will, you're going to have much better conversations. And the second thing is to get real, going back to cutting the bull chat. So instead of talking about the weather, talking about a movie that just came out, uh, you know, staying in the realm of small talk, start talking about passions, start talking about stories, and start really making an effort to connect with people. And people say to me all the time, well, I'm not comfortable being vulnerable. I'm not comfortable talking about the hard things that have happened in my life. And that's OK, because vulnerability doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be uncomfortable. And it doesn't have to be overly personal. You can talk about your passions and goals and aspirations. And as you have those conversations with people, once again, you will be amazed at the relationships that you start to build. So be a storyteller. Ask people their stories. Be a good listener and you'll connect with each other on those. So what are you waiting for? I'd like to leave you with a challenge. Sometime in the next three days, or maybe even after this conference, have a conversation with someone that you wouldn't have otherwise had. And then do it again. And then do it again. And you'll start to realize and you'll start to see how many interactions we all have to be a social catalyst. So ask yourself these questions. Are you uplifting the community with your interactions? Are you a social catalyst? How could you be more of one? Do you feel connected to the community? And are you building the community? If we all start to have more conversations with more people, and we make those conversations more meaningful, we can catalyze a social revolution that will build a more connected and happier community. Thank you.